So we are back in the brand new episode of the Stingers franchise in NBA 2K17. The last episode, we insert off with episode 1 of our extended Stingers franchise aside from our main series. So the last episode we went and we went into the playoffs. We had a pretty decent record, 72 and 10. It's pretty decent, I guess, the Stingers standards. But went into the playoffs, hoping to go and win a title with our last year with Chris May on the team. But chances are we went feast off against the Bulls. We lost somehow to the Chicago Bulls in, I believe, it might have been the semifinals before even the Eastern Conference Finals, which is pretty weird for us. So now we go into the season with a chip on our shoulder, especially against those Bulls. But look, we have Blake Griffin and now our brand new head coach, Andre Drummond, at the helm. So new personnel, maybe even new, some new, actually not really new players, more like grown players with more experience and stuff. Like Cody Wilkins, though, he's looking very good right now at his position. But right now, our, our main rival right now, actually, is the Kansas City Knights, who went and won the title last year. They're looking to go back to back like the Cavs this year in real life so right now we have to go and somehow balance our financial situation which is uh, our man Kyle Brady who's on our contract situation right now just based on that he is replacing Archie Wills this season just based on the fact that Archie Wills is injured right now and we need a point guard to go and play next season who's reliable so Kyle Brady operation sign Kyle Brady is basically in effect right now so this point of the season now we're 31-6 not too bad of a record I guess I thought we'd be better 34-9 37-9 now Here's when our big winning streak starts, so I'm just going to put that right now. We won, and we went and won already 10 in a row right now, 11 in a row, 12 in a row, 13 in a row, going into the All-Star break here with a 50-9 and nine record on the season. As we take a look at our game against the Vancouver Ravens, our first game against them, I believe, we won 171-33 against the Vancouver Ravens, the newest expansion team in the NBA. But Stefan, our former player, picked first overall by them in the expansion draft. 37 points. And former stinger Edgar Steele in there, who's on the team. He played well against us, but 170 is not... is a pretty decent score put up by us against those uh, lazy Ravens defense. But you take a look at all these scores, though. Can't breathe. 35 points against the Bulls in that game. We demolished them 141-106. But MVP right now, Tyler Reaver for the maybe the third time in a row. Or actually, third time in his career. So Tyler Reaver... 46 points per game is killing it at this point, but 6th man of the year, we have Lawan Bailey. And next man up on here is defensive player, we do not have Craig Lawson number 1, which is very weird. We have Herman Daly and we have Cody Kerr down there, but Cody Wilkins though, the other Cody, second in most improved. He's having a great season, but Craig Lawson is our only all-star this season. It is pretty weird to see that in our team, especially considering our team is full of all-stars with Gar Snow and so on. So I don't know how we're not getting more all-stars, but Cody Wilkins in the dunk contest once again. Looking to go back-to-back, and Gar Snow looking to go back-to-back in the three-point contest after he won it last year. So Cody Wilkins and Gar Snow won their each individual contest last season. Hopefully go and do it again and go bring some more honor to the Stingers franchise. But look, we cannot re-sign Kyle Brady 87 overall. We have too many, f like, we have too much salary. So we go and trade Mel Humphreys, our backup point guard, to the Ravens for a first-round pick. And now, we can go and finally re-sign our backup point guard, Kyle Brady, or even our star, Kyle Brady, because he's got an 87 overall rating. But when it comes to All-Star break, though, it looks like for a dunk contest, Cody Wilkins goes back-to-back, -back, but no Gar Snow as Wesley Farley goes and gets that one. So Farley, he takes that one over Gar Snow, and it's just rubbing even more salt in the wound, just based on the fact that Farley took us out of the playoffs last year, and now hopefully we can go do it to him this season after this uh, postseason starts. But 67-10... We're going, trying to go 72 and 10, but we lose the last game, go 71 and 11 on the season. Tyler Weaver, MVP once again, 45 points per game, a double double there, average on the season. Lamont Bailey, six man of the year. DPY goes to Herman Daly, no Craig Lawson, Mark Moss is most improved. And Ronald Andrews, coach of the year, over Andre Drummond, goes 71 and 11. So that's just terrible, though. I guess their team is pretty underrated over there in Kansas City, but still, though, we should have won it, even though, ah, just so weird, though. But all NBA teams, all NBA 13, if no player on there, all defensive first team, we finally have Craig Lawson and Cody Kerr, our big forwards right there, and the rest though, I mean, we have all rookie first team, we have nobody on there, rookie second team, nobody on there, so, no guards, no on the all teams once again, even though he's having a great overall season, I guess, kind of a low season by his standards, but I mean, he still put in the work though, and had a decent overall season for us on the team, so when you take a look at our season leaders, it looks like Cody Wilkins stepped it up big this year, leading us in points in almost all major offensive categories. So, we're facing off against the 76ers here in the first round. The Sixers, we win game 1, 131-112 final. Craig Lawson double-double there in the first game. Alvarez, 20 
28 against us. Game 2, we take game 2 to go up to nothing here. Cutiker 32 and 15, double double. And Kyle Brady 22 points and 10 assists now on double double. So, Kyle Brady having a great overall season after taking over for too well since he got injured. But game 3, take game 3, 133, 130 final. Garson puts up 30 points and 11 assists now and exploded offensively. And now we're looking to go and sweep the 76ers. And I believe if we sweep them, it's like, I don't know how many times he swept their first round of home in a row, but we do 114-111 finals. So we sweep the 76ers to go into the second round, finally, hopefully facing off against his Bulls to get revenge. But look, the Wizards go and take out the Bulls in the first round. And no, we don't have to go and deal with Farley yet again. So we're facing off against the Wizards instead of the Bulls, which we're more better at when it comes to our season stats. But their team, though, they're not that bad. They have Joey Lane, 85 overall. Kind of worried there, but Cody Kurt out one or two weeks out of the sprain right foot. So that's one injury for us and zero for them. But we take game one here to go one off here in the series, a 125, 116 finals. So Brian 32 in that one. Joey Lane 23 in five and 20 minutes. But game two, we take game two to go up to nothing here in the series as we win 151, 97 final. We just Destroy him that game. I don't know what the score is for this for MBT game three to go three nothing in this series, but look at this score. Damn! Cody Wilkins 51 points now in career high against the Wizards in that game. And finally, we're in a position to go and take out the Wizards in game four of the semifinals. And we actually do 131 114 final. We destroy him in the fourth quarter and win our back to back series as both sweeps in a row. So now we're heading to the ECF here. Finally got over that hump that we did not get over last year because we're not facing the Bulls this time too. And going to the ECF, facing off against the Celtics. And the Celtics, they defeat the Raptors 4 to 1. So that does mean it's going to be OKC and Knights final over there in the West, where it's going to be a Celtics and Stingers final over there in the East. So the Celtics are not too bad of a team, I guess. They have a, their bench is amazing, though. 76 overall plus. They're almost building their franchise exactly like how we are. But they have two injuries on the season. We have zero. We take game one, 141, 116 final. As Ballastari, 22 points in that one. And we put up a big offensive showing in that game. Game two, we take that one, 46 points out of Cody. Now on 22 and 11 out of Cody Kerr. And now on two. So Cody Wilkins and Cody Kerr playing hand in hand, defeating the Celtics. But game three, take that one to make it a 2 1 series lead. So their first loss by in this entire playoffs is by the Celtics. So a 2 1 series lead year now for us. Now 3 1 after that game, 128 89 final. As Ballastery, 20 points in that one, but Cody Wilkins, 28, and Cody Kerr, 22. So the two Cotties destroying it over here in Cincinnati. Maybe they might be able to take us into the finals if we win this game. But we go win this one, 135, 122, 26 final. As Cody Wilkins, 27 points in that one, Kyle Brady, 26. And finally, our team is moving on to the NBA Finals for the first time in this extended, I guess, series for the Stingers. So it's either going to be an OKC and Knights Final, but 3-1 by OKC. And they actually blow a 3-1 lead to the Kansas City Knights in that series. So the Knights come back from down 3-1. And they go and win this series just based on Frank Hopkins. Look at this guy's stats, though. Look at this. 40.6 points per game. This man is the entire offense for the Knights. And there's like there's a reason why they're 65 and 17. Look at their point guard. 76, 77, 89 for Neil T. That, hey, that's pretty respectable. 90 for Frank Hopkins, and their bench is not even that good. So it's based on Frank Hopkins and Neil Tate. But our team is almost... Everyone's playing well in coordination to go and win series is basically that's what our team is. So they have one injury, use your injuries on the season. Now it's going to game one of the NBA Finals. We think it's one 137 101 final. Cody Wilkins 27 points in that one. Garcino 25 and 9 and 3. So Garcino putting up a big offensive showing there, I guess. Considering he hasn't really, really showed up, I guess, as well so far. But Frank Hopkins 23 points, 12 rebounds in that one for the Knights. So game two of the final still in Cincinnati. They take this one 141 132 final. S. Craig lost in 23 and 10 for us. But somehow the Knights go and win this one in Cincinnati as of 43 points due from Frank Hopkins and 42 to Neil Tate. So those two stars demolished us in game two. Game three versus team game in Kansas. They take this one 139-126 finals. Cody Wilkins 24-11 and looks like Garcino a triple-double in that one but still we lost the game and that's all that matters. It's 46 points, 15 rebounds out of Frank Hopkins, the power forward. So I went to go check out his stats, see if he's an MVP yet but no MVP is just based on how well Tyler Weaver's been playing in the NBA. But game four of the finals in Kansas, we take this one 131-129 final as Cuddy puts up 26, Wilkins puts up 25. So the two Cuddies play well, but Garcino a triple-double, 10, 10, and 10. Finally gets another triple-double back-to-back. -back. Triples by our man Garcino. But in Game 5, though, 
Let's go and put a matchup on here, a specific matchup, Craig Lawson versus Frank Hopkins. Cause look how well Craig Lawson is at MB at defense, basically, is the reason why. So Frank Hopkins, I was kinda debating on whether to put Cody Kerr or Craig Lawson on him, but we decided to go put Craig Lawson based on his stats. But game five of the finals, we took to win 134-110 final. Finally, Gar Snow, 36 points in that one, seven for nine from the three-point line. But Campbell 20, 12 and 12 in that game, but the Knights only Frank Hopkins 29 points, 15 rebounds. As now we're up 3 2 year in the finals. Could be the last game of the, the series here, but we're gonna take a look at our lineup, see if he needs any adjusting. But look, Cody Kurt out for the season with a twisted left knee. We have one man down who's big on defense. That is not good for us. Last game, potentially last game of the finals. But in this game though, they demolished us 126 113 finals. So they win by 13 in that one game, but Craig lost in 12, 25 and 12. As you go and lose that one to make it a 3-3 series lead, and now it's going to force us into a Game 7 situation here with the Kansas City Knights and Frank Hopkins. So Frank Hopkins, 34-17 and now game for him, as he just played so big in that game. And look at his support though, he's got 8 plus 3 point shot in, uh, solve in there out of 24 points in that game. But Game 7 of the NBA Finals here, are we going to win? Are we going to lose? Let's check this game out right now. By 20. Really aggressive play there, taking it to the rack against the big fella. You know, Greg, aggressiveness is really the only option when you're on the wrong side of the size equation. We've got LaVissier, and it's Beasley in at the five. And they've done it, the new NBA champions. Well, they did it, and as they celebrate, you can just see the relief, the exhilaration that comes with winning it all. And Clark, you have to hand it to the entire organization. They work together to get right here. And guys, what a reward for the fan base. I mean, I know one thing, they're going to enjoy this memory for a long, long time. And we have enjoyed our time with you folks all season long. This is Kevin Harlan saying so long. Have a wonderful summer. So without Cody Crew, we go and win the NBA championships. The Stingers champions once again. Garth Snow's your finals MVP over Craig Lawson, over Cody Wilkins. It is pretty weird to see that, but I guess he had tri two triple doubles there in the finals. That's why he's an MVP. I mean, that's why he's the finals MVP. But Garth Snow, 35 points in that one. Frank Hopkins, 55 and 20. Just have spectacular numbers. Would have won finals MVP easily if we hadn't won it. So it took us to game seven. I thought it'd be an easy series, but I guess not. As Clyde Foster, 18 years in the league, 37 years old, he finally retires with a ring on his finger. So we went and picked him up at the free agency last year. Just go get win him a ring, and we actually accomplished our promise and get him a ring in his last year of, the, of his NBA career. But Derek Favors Jr. retires there. As look at our staff retirements, we have Andrew Truman, long member of the GM of the Stingers, and he's gone 35 years in the league. But no new rules approved here in league meetings or draft lottery. We do have one topic just based on the Nuggets. We went and took their first round pick with a top three exception, but we would take this one uh, at the 11th overall pick here. We're gonna pick 11th here in the NBA draft here. In the year 2048, let's go see this draft. With the first pick in the NBA draft, the Los Angeles Lakers select Jordan Henderson from Temple University. With the second pick in the NBA draft, the Orlando Magic select Randall Peacock from The Ohio State University.
with the third pick in the NBA draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Jaman Nunez, Argentina. Another year, another decent draft to guess. We have Henderson goes first overall, 81 overall, 22 years old. Peacock, 80 overall, 19 years old there. Aikido, we went pick them 11th overall, 30, 72 overall, 19 years old. So a decent overall pick there at 11th with Aikido. But the rest though, like we do have our 30th, 33rd overall pick there in Atkins. He's not only not that good. But Cody Wilkins is our only team option there. The league options though, we do have a few players, or actually a lot of players, except there's no top free agents here in the draft, in the free agency. Lewis Campbell qualifying offer, but Lewis Campbell, 84 overall, we cannot go and take a contract from him just based on the fact that he's way too much money. But our free agency there, we do have Marshall, 87 overall. We have Bryant, 86 overall, 35 years old. Westfall, 85 overall, 25 years old. More okay, and we do have Lewis Campbell there, 83 overall, 23 years old, that qualifying option by us. So, Lewis Campbell, way too much money that we cannot sign him, but even Trichet though, we can't even sign him, so we go and are forced to trade Lions there, our draft pick this year, but we could still not sign Trichet on the bench. So we can't even sign one player in here, Lewis Campbell, we're ready to go and accept an offer from, from the Pelicans, but we cannot go and sign him, just basically put us over the hard cap, so we have to let him go to the Pelicans. So Lewis Campbell, new beginnings there, but Wilkins goes up to 94 overall there in the progression, Walton goes down one overall there in the progression, we have Bra uh, Brady goes eight to up to 87 overall, Kerr goes down to 87, Will is go up to 84, so I guess not too bad of a progression period for us, not too many downs I guess for our team, but one man we gotta go draft next year is Frank Perry, 85 overall, this man has got amazing stats for a power forward slash center, so this guy, 6'10", he's got like a B plus in athleticism, we gotta go and pick him up if we can. The rest of you, like Dante Thompson, not too bad there. Spencer Evans, not too bad there, too. So, decent overall uh, draft class next season. But I guess on this episode off for here, make sure to like, subscribe for more Stingers Franchise Point. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.